Dr. Jane Goodall has spent the last half century changing the game for science and for women. For this 89-year-old living legend, it started with a little help from her mom. When I first dreamed, I was 10 years old. I'm going to grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals, and write books about them. Everybody laughed. How will you do that? We had virtually no money when I was growing up, and it was during World War II. And anyway, you're just a girl. But my mother said, if you want to do something like this, you're going to have to work really hard, take advantage of every opportunity. My two girls mm -hmm. have studied you and science. Mm -hmm. There's this legacy that you are leaving that women can do anything, mm -hmm. that hope is possible. I wish mom was alive to know how many people have said, Jane, thank you, you've taught me. Because you did it, I can do it too. In 1960, at the age of 26, Dr. Goodall did what many said she could never do. She touched down on African soil and went into the wild, the Gombe Stream National Park in Tanzania, to study man's closest genetic relative, the chimpanzee. Will you describe what that moment was like for you when you did gain their trust, mm -hmm. when you created this incredible friendship? Now I'm living in my childhood dream. Mm -hmm. and getting to know the chimpanzees, their vivid personalities, the way the mothers have this amazing ongoing relationship with their developing child. Males competing for dominance, swaggering, standing upright, shaking a fist. They're so like us, they kiss, embrace, hold hands. Mm -hmm. And I got on a geographic cover, and then there were all these people saying, well, she's only successful because she's got nice legs. <laughs> That's so what they said. If, if somebody said that now, you'd probably sue them. Right? <laughs> but back then, my attitude was, well, if that's what gets me money to study the chimps, which is my passion, thank you, legs. <laughs> and so began the world's longest running study of chimpanzees. Her scientific studies revolutionized the relationship between humans and animals and our knowledge about primate behavior. In the 1980s, Dr. Goodall became a conservation activist. If people, particularly our young people, lose hope, we're doomed because when you lose hope, you fall into apathy and do nothing. And you know, we've got a window of time to start healing some of this harm we've done to the environment. The key to her success, giving everyone a seat at the table. One thing I was thinking about, especially in this environment, where everyone is nose to nose when they're arguing about something. No one can find common ground. How do we get that part back? Yeah. When I went into the medical research labs, chimps in five foot by five foot cages, mm. I was shocked, horrified. I didn't attack them. I showed them pictures of the Gombe chimps, chimps in freedom. Mm. And I could see that turning in thinking. And it led to a series of meetings and the beginning of change. If you don't speak to people, how can you expect them to change? Oh, that's gosh, it though. I know. That's like, that's what we need everywhere right now. It's a message that transcends cultures and generations, and a message that Dr. Goodall continues to work tirelessly to pass on to the next generation with her youth organization, Roots and Shoots. The new Apple TV Plus show, Jane, is inspired by her work. Only if we understand, will we care. Only if we care, will we help. Jane Goodall said that. I hope that just from watching, they can then go to doing. Hope, is that something that you are still full of at this point in your life? Well, my main hope is the youth, because once yeah. they know the problem and they're empowered to take action, they're so full of energy, enthusiasm, mm -hmm. determination, and they are changing parents and grandparents. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the way to change minds, is to reach the heart first. As Dr. Goodall approaches the 10th decade of her life, she continues to travel 300 days a year. When she's not working, she lives with her sister in their childhood home in Southern England. If you ever had a day and your calendar was empty, what would you do after you opened your eyes that morning? I'd want to be somewhere out preferably in a forest, alone in nature. Is that where you're the happiest? That feeling of oneness with nature is so important because we are part of the natural world and we need to respect it. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody makes a difference. We just have to choose what difference we make. 
we can plant trees, we can clear litter. Sometimes people, when they see how big the problem is, they're like, it's too big, I can't do anything. But we can. There's we can little do, things that all of us things. can yes. do. Yeah, because the little things, when you multiply them by hundreds, thousands, millions, probably eventually billions, lead to a better world. Wasn't that amazing? Oh, what a great conversation. That she's Everything she sa said has stayed with us. Like you can yes. do one small thing for the environment yes. every day. Every single day. Yes. It's within our control. It we sure got that. Is. By the way, Jane is out today on Apple TV+. Plus. Yeah, it'll be fun for your kids to watch.